What's up guys, Brad here. In this video, I'll be reviewing SVS's SoundPath subwoofer isolation system. Now, just how much of a difference do these isolation feet make and should you consider checking them out for yourself? Well, let's get into it and find out. Now, previously, I did an overview video on SVS's SoundPath subwoofer isolation system along with their tri-band wireless audio adapter. Now, in that video, I talked about what you get in the box as well as what the isolation feet are made out of, so I won't really be covering that here. And in, in all honesty, what you get is fairly straightforward and simple, just the isolation feet and a few sets of screws for various thread sizes, so there isn't much to go over anyway. And to be completely clear here, SVS did loan me a single set of isolation feet in order to review them, but they didn't pay me anything for this review, and I don't get to keep the product for free after I'm done with it. My opinions are my own, and SVS will be seeing this video for the first time when it goes public on YouTube. So I've actually been curious about SVS's isolation feet for a while now, having read and heard about the benefits of decoupling your subwoofers and speakers from various online forums and YouTube videos. If you don't know what decoupling is, it basically weakens the interaction between your subwoofer or speaker and the floor, with the intent being to eliminate the energy transferred between the two. Now, before we go any further, if you're new to the channel, consider clicking on that subscribe button and ringing the bell icon icon so you never miss out when I upload a new video. Also, you'll find a direct link to SVS's SoundPath subwoofer isolation system in the description below, along with links to calibration tools you may want to check out, as well as a full list with links to my home theater setup. These are affiliate links, which do help support the channel at no cost to you. Okay, now, where was I? Decoupling. Ah. Got it, thanks. So decoupling actually has a few benefits. For starters, reducing base energy through the floor also means reducing the base energy through your walls as well, which can help reduce things buzzing and rattling throughout your room. This also means that base energy won't transfer as much to other rooms of your house or even outside of your home, which can help if you're constantly disturbing the people living with you or your neighbors or both, honestly. And because decoupling lifts your subwoofer or speakers off the floor just ever so slightly, this can mean cleaner, tighter sounding bass that can end up improving your overall dynamics. Okay, okay, so enough about decoupling, we get it. Do the isolation feet themselves actually do anything? Do they really cut down on buzzes and rattles throughout your room? And can they actually improve your sound quality? Or is it all just marketing BS? Well, no to the marketing BS and yes to everything else. Well, to a degree, let me explain. So when I attached the isolation feet to one of my PB2000 Pros and played an audio demo using only that subwoofer, I had literally no expectations and prepared for the worst. I mean, how could four little elastomer feet attached to my subwoofer make a difference at all? Well, I was actually pretty blown away to be completely honest. And the first thing I noticed right away, Gone was this annoying rattle that my walls made whenever a really low bass note would hit. Think of the opening to Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Those three Godzilla stomps that got progressively louder sounded like they were wreaking havoc on my inner walls without the isolation feet attached. And now they were dead silent. It's something that I wish I could capture using a microphone, but unfortunately I haven't been able to hear it in the tests I've done. It also helped in reducing some smaller rattles throughout the room, though I had already done quite a bit to minimize them anyway. Now, something else I noticed as a byproduct of the walls not rattling anymore, localization of bass was drastically reduced to the point where it was non-existent. Before attaching the isolation feet and with the walls rattling anytime there was a bass heavy scene, I always felt like I could localize where the bass was coming from even when running three subwoofers because the right wall doesn't rattle at the same time or as much as the left wall. Now, even though bass below a certain frequency is non-directional, any type of buzzing or rattling near your subwoofers can make it seem like bass is coming from that area instead of all around you. With the isolation feet attached, I just couldn't tell where the bass was coming from anymore. At all. It, it was honestly awesome. Now unfortunately, it's really difficult if not impossible to capture the differences I'm hearing with just a regular microphone. So I wanted to try out a little idea I had. I thought it would be fun to put a glass of water on a board in front of the subwoofer, play a scene without the isolation feet, then put the isolation feet on the subwoofer and play the same scene to see if there were any changes in the ripples in the water created by the bass energy. Now, not really scientific at all, but fun to try out nonetheless. 
And guess what? It didn't really show much because I'm not a scientist or Steven Spielberg and I don't work for Engine. Syncing them up and playing them side by side, they look identical for the most part. If we zoom in really close, we can actually see that the side with the isolation feet does, in fact, have fewer smaller ripples, which I guess could technically mean that less base energy is being transferred through the floor. But this was hardly a scientific test and more for fun, so to make up for it, let's look at some measurements in Room EQ Wizard to see if there are any changes to frequency response before talking about the impacts to sound quality. So jumping right into REW, our first measurement is of the SVS PB2000 Pro without the isolation feed attached. This subwoofer is placed in the front right corner of the room, and this measurement was taken at the main listening position. Now if we turn on the measurement with the isolation feed attached, which is the green line, we can see that nothing really changed. Any variation in response, which as you can see for yourself is incredibly minor, I'll chalk up to just being a margin of error. I wanted to also measure measure my second PB2000 Pro, which is in the front left corner of the room, to see if we get similar results. The blue line here is without the isolation feet, and if we switch on the measurement with the isolation feet, we can see that, again, there really wasn't a change at all or anything that would be noticeable to our ears. I also wanted to do near field measurements to take the room out of the equation and see if we get any measurable differences. The first measurement here is the front right corner sub with no feet attached. Turning on the measurement with the isolation feet attached and here again, we really see no change other than a slight reduction in overall volume. This was totally on me as I didn't move the microphone to make up for the fact that the sub was now a couple of inches off the ground, so the microphone technically wasn't pointed at the exact same spot. My bad. And I do this again on the measurements for the front left corner subwoofer, and we can see that it's a similar thing to the front right subwoofer. Just a bald dude not adjusting the mic to make up for the extra height the isolation feet added. Well, so much for making up for that previous Jurassic Park scientific blunder. Under Brad. So as expected, there were no real differences when looking at the measurements between having the isolation feet off versus on. So there wasn't any difference in sound quality then either, correct? Well, actually, things did sound quite a bit tighter and cleaner than before. There was a certain level of clarity that I noticed just wasn't there before. It's really hard to describe, but I was actually shocked because the best way I can explain it is exactly how SVS has worded it on their website tighter and cleaner sounding bass and better sonic clarity and dynamics. Initially, I thought this was down to the police CB effect. I believe I was having the police CB effect. But as I kept doing A and B comparisons, I couldn't help but notice the improvements when the isolation feet were attached. Now, don't get me wrong, this didn't suddenly make the bass coming out of my subwoofers vastly different or incredibly superior in every way. I mean, I didn't feel the bass in my home theater sounded bad before at all. But adding the isolation feet definitely improved things, and I think the best way I can describe it is that it cleaned up the bass and added that final finishing touch it was missing before. So would I recommend Men checking out SVS's SoundPath subwoofer isolation system? Well, I'll just say this. SVS sent me the single pack of four isolation feet to review. I was really impressed by them, more than I thought I'd be, so much so that I couldn't help but wonder what my system with four subwoofers would sound like with isolation feet on every single one. So I bought three more sets and will be purchasing the one SVS sent me. And I gotta say, I won't be going back to not using them. I, I really do feel that the claims of improved dynamics, sonic clarity, along with tighter, cleaner bass are actually true, at least in my system. And I think it's worth mentioning that there really isn't a negative impact here. I, I still get the same pant flapping bass and chest slam I did before, just without the annoying room rattling and buzzing. So yeah, I definitely think these are worth checking out. They're not insanely pricey at $50 for a four pack and $70 for a six pack, but it can get costly if you have multiple subwoofers and some people may not feel that the improvement in sound quality is worth the extra cost and that's honestly okay. I personally enjoy the improvements that I'm getting enough that I do feel it's worth the nearly $200 I've spent buying all four sets. With that said, if you're on the fence but want to try them out, I definitely recommend buying them from either SVS who have a 45-day risk-free in-home trial or Amazon who have a more standard 30-day return policy. You'll find links to both in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up as it'll help this video reach more people. If you have any questions about SVS's SoundPath subwoofer isolation system, or if you use them yourself and want to share your experience with others, leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.